Let's go to Queensland now and catch up with the LNP Senator for Queensland, James McGrath. Thanks for joining us, uh, James. Uh, do you want to get you on that uh, Catherine Deves issue first? Uh, still some in the Liberal Party. The Treasurer of New South Wales, no less, says that she should be disendorsed for running arguments uh, about girls and women in sport. What's going to happen with this? You've only got a couple of days to act, I, I understand, uh, and you wouldn't be able to get a new candidate in there. Well, well, look, I'm a Queensland senator and I don't like <laughs> it when Southerners tell my party, the Liberal National Party, what to do. I tell them to go and get stuffed. So I'm certainly not going to give advice to the New South Wales Liberal Party. But I will say this. The really interesting thing is less what Catherine Deves has said, and I think most Australians would support her position, it's more about what Sally Stegall is up to. Because Sally Stegall is refusing to answer the question about whether she would support Anthony Albanese as Prime Minister. We all know she's going to if there is a minority government. We all know that she wants a Labor-Green government. So she's raising everything possible to get away from not answering that substantial question because her seat is a conservative, liberal seat and it would not want a Labor Prime Minister, but that's who she's going to back. So she's just using this to take attention away from her own lack of transparency and accountability. Well, she's done interviews in the last little while where she's spent most of the time attacking Scott Morrison and the Coalition, of course, but then refusing to say who she'd back in the case of a minority government, a hung parliament, pretending that that's not an issue. And she's not alone, of course. Allegra Spender in Wentworth and Zoe Daniel in Melbourne and uh, Kate Cheney in, in, in West Australia, they're, they're all running this argument. They're pretending that they don't know who they would support when everything they do and say and everything they're, they're acting on in terms of where they're running says that they are aiming to deliver a Green left government, a Labor, Greens and Independence uh, government. How do you draw that out? As a campaigner, how do you draw that out so that people who are thinking about voting for them know exactly what they're doing? Well, well, there's two things. Uh, our good friends in the media uh, need to keep doing, doing their job about holding these, these politicians to account. And, and fair credit to, to Laura, Laura this morning in terms of her interview with, with Zali, uh, which was a, real, a bizarre interview from Stegall's perspective in terms of all the different circles she went around in. But it's also up to, to the Liberal Party, the National Party, the Liberal National Party to just to reinforce with the voters continually that a vote for any independent, whether it's uh, Zali Stegall or Allegra Spender, is a vote for Anthony Albanese as Prime Minister. Uh, and it's as simple as that. You've just got, we've just got to keep on pushing that message through because this election, I think, is going to be a close election. And the last thing I want to see is a bunch of so-called teal lefty independents supporting Albanese and uh, Adam Band sitting around the Cabinet table. That is going to be bad for Australia. What about when it comes to the Greens and their impact on Labor? We've heard from the Greens a spokesperson on defence. I think they call it peace, <laughs> as is their way. Uh, and talking about there's no issues with China setting up an arrangement, uh, uh, an alliance, effectively, ar arrangement in Solomon Islands. And that uh, we shouldn't be worried about the future of Taiwan either. I, I, I thought this, this, this joker was having a joke on all of us with that story. I mean, this, this just shows how batshit crazy the Greens are when they say that communist China is not a threat to peace and security in, in the broader Asia-Pacific area and in terms of what they're up to in the Solomons. And I've got family in the Solomons, so I can tell you this. The, the, the Solomon Islanders all know what the Chinese government's up to. They're not happy with their government. So if the people in the Solomons can see what, what communist China's up to, I can't see why a bunch of overpaid green senators can't see the damage that communist China is going to cause to peace and security. And just remember, just remember, the only way Labor can win this coming election is on the back of green preferences and also using the Greens in the Senate to get legislation through. And what is going to be the price for that support? You know, is it going to be Labor going soft on defence? Last time Labor in power, they cut, cut defence spending to levels pre-World War II. With the Greens, it'll probably go back to levels pre-the Boer War. <laughs> well, this is the problem. This is why I raise it. I mean, nutty Greens uh, speeches mean nothing on, on their own, but it's about what influence they would have if Labor win. As you say, Labor rely on their preferences in, in, in countless seats, but also a Labor government would get nothing through the Senate without the Greens. So the issue here is not, not just on this issue. Defence is a huge worry, of course, but I noticed today that Anthony Albanese is trying to say that his government would support new coal mines in your state of Queensland that are being proposed. How's he going to do that if he's reliant on the Greens? 
We all know he, he's not going to do it. Albanese said he wants to, to govern like Premier Palaszczuk, which should scare the bejesus out of everybody, considering what an appalling job she's doing. But the classic example of how Palaszczuk has destroyed the coal industry in this state is you go to a little place called Ackland uh, near Oakey, where her government has... has continually tried to stop the uh, expansion of a coal mine there, uh, which means that hundreds of jobs have been lost because of the failure of Labor, and it's because of a secret deal between state Labor and the Greens. And we all know that our Albanese has not done anything in his life. He's a creature of process. And you look at his words today. He didn't say, yes, I'm going to support mines, I'm going to fight for, for miners. He just said, he used politician speak. And what he's going to do, he's going to allow the process. He'll let green warfare uh, take out these mines. He won't back them like our government backs them. Well, we're not backing a mine for the sake of a mine. We're backing jobs and we're backing the royalties that come from, from these mines and we're backing and making sure we've got safe and reliable electricity in this state. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing that Labor, again, is lacking, lacking policy uh, clarity on these issues because, of course, they were front and centre at the last election. They don't seem to have been done the work to actually unify around a clear a clear policy here and uh, uh, yeah it's hard to see any coal mines getting the support of a federal Labor government when we've seen what the Greens are saying and what the Labor left generally says. Now we've called out a lot of Anthony Albanese's uh, rather large errors in the first week. We can't let the Prime Minister off scot-free. Let's have a look at uh, Scott Morrison's mistake in Perth today. In income support through the job seeker, which, as you know, we, we increased from 40 bucks uh, a week to 46 bucks a week um, since the last election. Yeah, that's what a gaff looks like. You want to downplay these things as little missteps and gaffes. That's a mistake. He should have been saying 40 from $40 a day to $46 a day. But uh, there'll be plenty out there trying to talk this up now. That this is apparently just as bad as Albo not knowing the unemployment rate. Well, the thing, the thing about the thing about Albo, and I've got a little prop here. So, so some, you know, some people uh, caught up with Albo today at, at, at his press conference and had some signs here just to help him in terms of know some key key figures like the unemployment rate. But the thing about Albanese is he's. Um, Chris, you're the same generation as me, um, is that he's the Uncle Arthur of Australian <laughs> politics. Remember Uncle Arthur of Fast Forward? That is Albanese. <laughs> that is what he's like. He's bumbling his way around this country. And you just go, seriously? Like, yes, they said he didn't hear a, a question properly. Can you imagine this guy sitting down with the President of China or the President of the United States and go, oh, sorry, I didn't hear you properly. I didn't have my hearing aid turned Ooh, on. Uh, Are you yeah. serious? We don't, we, don't, we don't want this guy anywhere near the levers of power. I don't want I wouldn't trust it with my remote control or a toaster, let alone being in charge of our economy and the rebuilder after, after COVID. I so, yeah, he's gaff prone. Uh, I dips my lid to your little analogy there. Uncle Arthur is brilliant. I've been saying that uh, Joe Biden is the Chauncey Gardner in the, in the White House. So we've got Chauncey Gardner <laughs> meets Uncle Arthur at the next time Australia and the US get together. Thanks for joining us, James. No worries. Thanks, Chris. Turn away. James McGraw there, yeah. Chauncey Gardner running the White House and uh, Uncle Arthur in the lodge. Uh, what could possibly go wrong?